with all that said, I am very happy to turn the microphone over to Betsy Bush from Spongetta's Garden. She is my co-chair for the flower track and she is going to introduce the speakers who are very good friends of her. Take it away, Betsy. Unmute Betsy. I did that with my morning class. Okay, let's try that again. Sorry. Okay, now I'm unmuted. Um, thank you for coming back for the third session of the flower track. And we're excited today to have Kenyon Parsons and Carrie sitting off on the side. And hold on one second. We're having a technical difficulty here. We are not getting um, the present. Okay. Anyhow, I'm going to go, we're going to go for it. Um, happy to today to have Kenyon Parsons, who has been farming since 1993 Three. Um, and has developed a um, huge vegetable farm area um, and added flowers over the years. And he's going to tell you how he did it and why he did it. And I just have to say, he's one of the most funny and compelling people I know. So it's going to be a good talk. Okay, we're all set. Kenyon, take it away. Hi, I'm Kenyon Parsons. Uh, my wife Carrie's in the background running the slideshow for me. I'd like to thank you for all having me speak today and uh, I hope we have a little fun and learn a little about cut flowers on a vegetable farm. Um, I just want to go through the first slide and uh, just kind of show kind of what we did. Uh, the slide on the right is was the first bouquet of 2020. Uh, that was about mid-June, some sunflowers and some delphiniums. And behind that, on that slide is our flower field. It's about a two acre field of you cut we cut flowers um, and right along Route 20 in Sharon Springs. Uh, the next picture is a picture of my dog Violet and at her feet is a, was a dwarf sunflower. Um, sadly, that dwarf sunflower was eaten by Violet. And we do a lot of sun, dwarf sunflowers and tragically that one was eaten by the cutest puppy in the world. So even with the best intentions, there's gonna be loss. Uh, sometimes there's sunflowers so many we have them by the palette. How fun is that? And here's uh, the last slide on the left is a picture. Of, oh, it's transitioned from clads to flowering kale. Uh, looks like this is going to be a beginning of September kind of um, time. Um, next slide, please. Get closer, please. Um, so my sister had a dairy farm in Sharon in 1993. She went out of business and we wanted to keep the farm. And I started farming then and I knew dairy wasn't the way to go. Uh, so we started with vegetables for lack of a blind purpose. Uh, vegetables that kept growing. Um, we started a little, we, the focus was off a picnic table. So that was our sales. And uh, the season then was July and August. And, and I like flowers. I have a relative that used to grow five acres of glad. So they have a familiar response with glads. And um, I love them. They're big, they're six feet tall. How could you hate them? So I started growing some glads in 98. And that seemed to work out. And now we're up to about 3,000 glads, three plantings of glads. Uh, then, a couple years went by, we started adding more cup flowers, some lisianthus, zinnias, sunflowers, uh, asters of all kinds. Uh, now we're up to snaps and amaranth and millet, status, uh, hibiscus, celosia, some straw flowers, gumfrina. I hated gumfrina. I'm back on gumfrina. Uh, yarrow and bachelor buttons. Uh, so we really want to go now from hanging baskets. Our season starts about the middle of April now, and we wrapped up this year about the 15th of December with kissing balls, uh, Christmas trees, and Brussels sprouts. Um, next slide, please. Oh, could you, I'm sorry, can we back up one second? The, um, 
the picture in that is a really fun picture back to Dwarf Sunflowers. This was the first load that we sold at the Amish auction last year. And it just was a really, you can drive around with a truckload of flowers and you're gonna get attention. And that was just really fun. But anyway, next slide, please. Uh, the farm's on Route 20, Sharon Springs. And Sharon Springs is kind of fun because it's an eclectic little town. There's some hotels that are kind of coming back. It was a resort town for a long time. And they're trying to do some more fun things like that. So there's really an interest in locally cut flowers. Uh, Route 20 is the greatest road in the world. I'm blessed with a great location. Uh, what you're looking at behind the sunflowers is a half mile of road frontage looking west. And the farm, in spite of me, does great because of where it is. It's a great spot. We're on the way home from Cooperstown if you live anywhere east. Um, but most people, Connecticut, Massachusetts, it's a, it's a fun, you have to go past my house to get on a throughway for a lot of people. And that gets a lot of the Cooperstown crowd. Um, we were selling glads until last year to the opera, going to Las opera. Our glads are through as projectiles to throw uh, on stage at the end of every last performance. Um, flowers are good besides just being in bases, you can throw them. Um, and uh, our other claim to fame for three governors, we decorated the governor's mansion uh, with pumpkins and corn stalks. And uh, that's a story for another day. Next slide, please. So why cut flowers? Um, we grow all these products you see, hay, straw, bark mulch, topsoil. I like to sell things. I like retail. Um, if you don't like retail, this, topic is not for you. Um, everything we sell is comes off the cart at the bottom of the screen here. Um, it's just a wagon, a little tiny wagon. Uh, I have friends that have built bigger stands. I want to keep this wagon forever. Um, and so like I said, when we started, we have uh, hanging baskets and vegetable plants and all of that. And then we go to vegetables and then around the 1st of August, there would be kind of a lag because there was no new vegetables. There's no new, people have had corn, people have had zucchini, they love them, but there's no new thing to hook them. So with cut flowers for us, it really fills a niche between July and August. And then you go into mums and pumpkins. Uh, do I want to do cut flowers later? I'd rather just switch to pumpkins. It's a good month and a half season and I'll call it good at that. Um, uh, next slide, please. So some of the fun things that uh, we had, we got to do, we did not make this cake. This cake, those are our flowers though. Uh, there's a bunch of the bouquets that we made. Uh, the picture in the bottom is me getting ready for the wholesale flowers. We're going to send uh, 15 bouquets out. That was a big deal. Um, one thing that we started doing with you cut was you cut glads because physically we thought we could do all of it ourselves and it's not manageable. You can't get it done fast enough. Um, so you cut, you got a particular color glad that you would like, we would love you to go cut that particular color if we have it. Um, now, the one thing I wanna say is from the stand to where the man is standing with gladiolas is 30 feet. There's a driveway and there's 30 feet apart. That is the longest 30 feet of lawn in the world. So many people pull in, where did the flowers come from? Well, they, they were, they looked at them when they got out of their car, but there was, it's just so far away. It's, 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 it's amazing to me. So the title of this, look, look at the pretty, I drag a lot of people out into the flower field. Um, a lot of people, uncomfortably numbers. <laughs> uh, we wreck a lot of shoes. Uh, but if you walk out, it's one of the fun things is that with vegetable selling, Oh, it might be a battle. I have a guy that refuses to spend any money on pickling cucumbers. But his grandmother grew glads and he sees a bucket of glads and his whole mood changes, which is just fascinating to me in retail. Uh, how you could fight in one second and then just be best friends in the next over just a pretty flower. 
And that whole response really intrigues me. Um, now, I want to talk about GLADS for a second. Um, so we grew GLADS. At first year, I grew 1,000. And I don't dig, I, I dug them, I did dig them. And I had terrible success the next year. They burned up, I did something horribly wrong. So I vowed never to dig another glad, I'll just buy new ones. And I planted sweet corn and I sprayed atrazine where the old glads were. And a year, I even lived in zone four, there's no way they could live. I had the most beautiful glads in my uh, sweet corn that year. Um, so I vowed never to ever dig, I will always plant new ones. Um, now, the other fun thing with GLADS is so 10 years of growing GLADS, you think you get good at it. You kind of take them for granted. Uh, we do three plantings once the first of May, middle of May, uh, first of June, plant a thousand as a rip. They're wrapped up by the 10th of September. It's easy until the thrips came. And then we had a year that we had some thrips, we lost some flowers. We had some more thrips, we lost more flowers. We rotated, we sprayed, we started to spray once a week. We could not get rid of the thrips. Now this is something you almost write down. You could Google this too, but we learned to soak your glads in four teaspoons per gallon of water of lice. Put a gallon of water, four teaspoons of Lysol. Soak them for six hours before. And miraculously, glad thrips be gone. So I have some people that are really glad customers. And one family in particular, there was a dozen of them, and grandma grew glads commercially. So I say to this one lady whose family all come for glads, I said, Hey, I just learned I don't if I can grow glads again. The thrips are gone. She said, Yeah, my, my grandma always soaked them in Lysol too. And I'm like, why didn't you tell me this three years ago? I was just it's a struggle. It's a struggle. You have to find this information out. Uh, next slide, please. So how to grow. We grow all annuals. I used to grow, we used to mess around with some delphiniums. Um, I buy most of my perennial plugs. They just, I'm not, I'm not set up to grow them. Um, we treat all the, all the flowers that we grow, or we treat like vegetables. Vegetables are focus. So that's, that's how kind of we, that's how we heat, that's how we fertilize. Um, we learned quickly that there's a lot of flowers that can't really be quite treated like a vegetable. Um, a pepper plant can be a little cool and it'll live. Zinnia will hate you forever. Um, but we we're starting to figure it out. I always wanted to say, uh, one of the things you really got to do is just check your water, get your alkalinity right. And you might have to add some water to your, you add some acid to your water. Um, one of the biggest things that we did was buy a dosatron and it, it really, it's the only way to go. You have to somehow figure out, somehow meter your fertilizer and get your acid levels right. I have really hard water, so we could, or we were wasting a lot of money on fertilizer. Um, my, like I said, my target season for flowers is mid July through the middle of September. So we want to start like uh, the middle of, March, we'll start with asters uh, in the greenhouse and we plant everything in 288s. Um, we've never planted enough sunflowers, no matter how many we plant, it's never enough. Uh, the timing's always wrong. We'll have a big hit and then they'll be all into them and then we'll just peter out at a really sad time. Uh, so plant more sunflowers, that's a takeaway from that. Uh, we grow everything in 128 to 288 plug trays and um, the only thing I buy is Lysianthus plugs just because, again, they're too hard to germinate. I'm not that, I don't have that level of greenhouse care. Um, and again, be careful of cold greenhouses. Um, Solosi doesn't like it and zinnias hate it. Uh, next slide, please. Um, transplanting, we treat them like vegetables. Uh, we try to plow in the middle of the beginning of May. I uh, broadcast 300 pounds of triple 17 down and work it in. Uh, they black plastic on it at six foot row centers. And uh, we try to start getting ready to transplant, usually around the 20th of May, um, not much before. I don't really, like I said, we're trying for about the 15th of July for their first flowers. Um, we set them out on four foot plastic, a double row, 18 inches apart, because uh, that's the wheel I have. Uh, we should do Lizzie's tighter. Uh, I just had it yet and maybe this will be the year. I'd like to do them at eight inches. I don't use any net. Um, we let them kind of live wild and free. Uh, we should probably net. Uh, I don't think you have to stake. 
even with glads, so far we haven't had that big of a problem. Some thunderstorms might mess up stuff, but it's not so bad. Um, we try to set plants out to a in harvest efficiency. Nothing is worse than going to cut a bouquet and finding that a vegetable farmer planted a row, a row, entire 500 feet of uproar rows that blocks you from getting anything else. Uh, one thing we did when we just field layout. Last year we put all the giant, we've had terrible luck with asters drowning. They hate being wet. We put the asters at the far end of the field. I'll oh, forget about them, we'll stick them out there. If they hit, it's a, it's a miracle. Well, last year in 2020, they hit. So they're about a quarter mile away. So sadly, nobody cut giant ray last year because it was too far away. Um, so make, when you lay out your field, you don't have to do it all the same row. Mix it up. It, you'll, it, you'll, you'll thank me in the long run. Next slide, please. Uh, we saw our flowers by the stem, uh, bouquets 13, but if you want a big centerpiece, we'll do whatever you want. Uh, this first slide on the top left is a bunch of zinnias in a bucket. Uh, we found if you want to kill flowers, do free choice out of a bucket. Uh, people are ruthless. Uh, I don't know why, but it's just a great way to wreck flowers. So I don't like doing that. So in order to get away from that, we want you cut. Um, I want you to pick them. You're in charge. You have a color. You have the flower you like. You go cut it. You'll have a great time. I promise. Uh, one of my most fun things of selling flowers is a really busy, hectic, mid-August. Families on vacation. They come in. They buy six ears of corn. The woman wants to check out the sunflowers and stands timidly at the end of the field. They say, come on, let's go in there and cut some. And within a 50 feet, her mood changed. Um, after three hours, the husband and kids, I think, had to go start new lives somewhere else. Um, I think she's still out there. Um, it was really fun. It was really fun to see how that affected. Just, I, I just like that. Um, uh, I told you the glads and there's some flowers there. It's just we finally bought a floral cooler and uh, that was really that really saved us. Um, we like you pick. I do you pick pumpkins. Uh, I have a corn maze. I have a hay maze. I want people to come to my farm. I want you to hang out. Uh, the more you come, the more you will come. And if I can be the, your guide, that's what I want to be. Uh, why go anywhere else? Um, I haven't really, I go to a couple farmers markets. I haven't really brought flowers there. We just got a van last year. So I really didn't have room in the truck and flowers and transport, transportation before that was just, a, we were treated like firewood and it was just a bad thing for everybody. Um, Lisa and I know talked to, from Floral Root talked a lot about how our relationship with local florists. Well, once local florists know you're out there and if you can work out a good price, uh, they'll have a few that come and cut themselves and it's a great deal for everybody. They, they know what they want. They know the color, they know everything. Um, now, one fun thing that I never thought would be picked up in our business was that, we, so I've ordered for wholesale flowers. Ladies gonna buy 15 bouquets a week, 20 weeks. How can we be past this up? It's dreamy, the price is awesome. They gotta be wrapped. My job drops on the floor. I don't know how to wrap a bouquet. I can cut a pretty bouquet, but I don't know how to wrap one. So the first, first time out, the flowers looked like burritos, which is not a horrible way. You can get a lot in a bucket, but people don't necessarily want to buy flower burritos. Uh, Betsy has taught me a party hat is by far the easiest way. Who knew? Four grown-ups sitting in front of a barn with five minutes and we're all screaming at each other. That's not how you do this. Um, just fun stuff like that. Um, you never, it's something you never thought you would have to learn that was going to be the hardest thing. Um, we do weddings. There's some people had weddings come. Uh, the bridal party came and we cut and the bridal party came the day before the wedding and made up their bouquets and stashed them in a cooler. That was really fun. Um, I try not to do big fancy weddings. We don't have that kind of flowers. We don't have that kind of time. Um, I have whatever I have that day and I would love to sell you what I have that day. Uh, next slide, please. So we'd like to grow stuff. 
Um, and sometimes what we like to grow is not the stellar success story that we would like it to be. Um, Cactus Zinnias. Who knew Cactus Zinnias would be so controversial? Too frilly. I don't know. I don't know. There's no good reason to me. Uh, orange flowers. Everybody hates orange. Um, the And I can't believe I'm even saying this in a sentence. Um, the horribly offensive love lies bleeding. Oh, my wife made a gift bouquet. I gift bouquet to my mother-in-law. She plucked out the love lines bleeding. And Carrie says, that's the best part of the whole bouquet. And she says, that's nice, dear. You, you bring this one home for yourself. Um, if you are over 50, you hate love lines bleeding. And if you're under 50, apparently you're cool with it. It's just fascinating. Um, the controversial purple millet. Uh, I love it. It's a good, it's a good spike. How can you pass it up in a, in a bouquet? Everyone hates it. Uh, looks like a cattail. That never stopped me before. Um, so the moral of the story is you came to my house for 50 roses and I only have red sunflowers that are ready that day. I'm going to sell you red sunflowers. Now, before you all jump on the red sunflower bandwagon, just know that any red sunflower loses petals as soon as you look at them. So be ready for disappointment. I love Moulin Rouge. It's, it's a sad, sad flower. It's going to depress you. Um, and if you're in a hurry and you need a filler, purple millet, get it. I don't care if they like it or not. It's big. <laughs> Next slide, please. So... We try to help you. We want we want you to come back. And we sold some early sunflowers out of the field on July 1st, and the lady loved them. But the stems weren't loud enough. But that's as long as the stems were. So, and that was the day of the event, and I didn't have any longer one. Did you see me claw my face? That's 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 the fun part of flowers when you start to get a little exasperated and you just fun, it's good stress. Uh, you had to talk her off the ledge. You're gonna have longer stems next week, not this week. Um, bouquets are made by what's available, what we got, um, and time constraints. More stories, just keep talking. Okay. Um, my go-to bouquet always is some white lizzies, peat bread zinnias, peat bread zinnias, and three purple melon. It's awesome. Um, and like I said, it's pretty if you're adding the revolution. Now, one thing that we do at home, which is really fun, I don't know if it's necessarily healthy, but we'd love to do it, is have bouquet wars. Uh, Carrie and I will go out and cut as many bouquets in a limited amount of time as we have. Let's say we bang out 10 apiece. And then to judge our self-worth, whoever's bouquets sell first, well, they're just an overall better person. Um, it's really fun. It's really fun. And like I said, it's probably unhealthy. We get a little needy. There's a few people that if you're like, do you like this bouquet? They know you're leading, whatever. It's still fun. Um, these, because this is all retail, it's only a big deal if you make it a big deal. So if you say pink zinnias, aren't these pink zinnias the bomb? Well, if you say it enough times, suddenly it becomes a bomb. More stories. More stories. Um, next slide, please. Uh, I love Soraya Sunflower. Uh, like I said, reds, all the reds are kind of bummer. Uh, but Soraya is a great rancher. I haven't gone any pro cuts as single stem cuts just because we kind of wanted, we never needed flowers for that one day. Um, I did some. And to do some dwarf sunflowers, we tried for a target date of May 1st, in dwarfs in pots on May 1st. And I started in the middle of February to the middle of March, and I still can't miss it by like four days. Um, it's too hard. Um, with Lysianthus, I love misty blue and champagne. They're really pretty. And to not take anything away from anybody who's a floral designer, um, I'm not a floral designer. I just like flowers and I know if I put 13 of them in a chunk they're going to look pretty uh, 
you get into some crazy colors. I get hung up in uh, some of the yellows and pinks. I don't know what goes with what. That's why a standard white, red, dark brown, that's easy breezy. Uh, so during bouquet wars, <laughs> during bouquet wars, one day, we have a woman that comes at two o'clock every Sunday for four bouquets. And of course, it's five of two on Sunday and there's no bouquets made. And this lady comes every week. We don't want to blow her off. We don't want to make her wait. So Carrie's like, I, I'm gonna, I already got two done. You just got to cut one. And while you're cutting that one, I'll cut the last one. So I forget that there's a time delay. And I also forget that I'm running the stand at the same time. I decide I'm going to make the most eclectic, most beautiful bouquet known to the land. Um, well, she cuts four bouquets, waits on 20 customers. A lady shows up. I come walking out of the field. Karen, look what I did for you. Um, it took like an hour. There was probably no profit at all in that deal. So you got to make sure when you do bouquet wars that the time is really a factor. Um, and like I said, when we lay out the field to cut, you really ought to be able to bang out six an hour. If you're not doing that, there's not a lot of money in five. Just we do flowers just based on uh, by the hour. You ought to be able to make thirty bucks an hour over cost cutting flowers. Um, that's what I like anyway. Um, we tried uh, one disappointment in Lizzie's was some Roseanne Black Pearl. It was a distressed Lizzie, and I just was not wowed by it at all. Maybe people have better luck with it. Um, we had some themes one year. We did all light green flowers. So I did Hulk Aster, I did some lime green Lizzie's uh, for no reason, just, just to have a, a silly theme. It wasn't all the flowers, but it was a chunk of them. And I just wanted to see how we could get people into a certain color or not. And uh, but needless to say, we don't grow Hulk anymore. And uh, lime green kind of came and went, but there were still, there were some beautiful bouquets came out of that. Um, if you want to get into flower business, Baronet's Giants, they're the only way to go. Uh, they're just big, they're lovely, uh, dahlia looking. I haven't done dahlias, I'm afraid of my winter storage. I know the mice are gonna eat the tubers. Um, I have to get over myself and start doing that. Um, and we need more fillers. We're starting to mess around with fillers, more status. Um, not red stripe, I'm sorry, that's a beer in Jamaica. <laughs> Um, a lot of amaranths. Again, some are offensive to some people. We didn't know. Uh, Amaral tassels, apparently. One thing you got to watch are the amaranths. It's Palmer amaranth, the one that uh, is coming across and it's going to contaminate every cornfield. And apparently that came from a bouquet. So I just make sure when you're buying your stuff, you don't let some of this stuff go to seed because maybe you don't want it around. Uh, we did a row of Sweet Annie. Uh, 30 years ago, I've sprayed it with everything known to man. I've plotted, I've, I've done whatever I could to scorch the earth of Sweet Annie and it's still in the middle of my glads and uh, that distresses me. Um, giant Ray Asters, uh, they look like fireworks. Um, they look, everybody loves them. Just don't let them have wet feet. Uh, next slide. So, what have they done for us? They, they have helped increase sales and profitability. It makes the stand look nice. If, if nothing else, it makes the stand look nice. Um, there's a picture of Violet trying to move. She's moved on from dwarf sunflowers, and now she's really thinking about taking that emerald tassel, those of Ireland, right off the shelf. Um, she's cute, though. And uh, hey, if a cute dog needs you, what you need to sell flowers, so, so be it. Um, the... Something as fun as, well, you can't really see behind Violet. So we have everything on plastic. And what are you gonna do for weed control? Well, I used to cultivate because that's how you do all my vegetables. And you cut after cultivation is just making some really ankle, horrible ankle breaking ruts. It's horrible. So then we decided that we would just mulch it with mulch hay or rye straw, rye straw. So we mulch it with rye straw. The one boy that was working for me misunderstood and used 40 bales of rye straw and about a hundred feet of row. 
Um, nothing grew through that. You couldn't walk down. It was like walking on the moon. Uh, Hay Mountain, we called it. Uh, that it's still weedy. Uh, so now I just have a kid. I pay a kid twice a week to come with a weed whacker, and we weed whack in between the plastic. Uh, it can't. You can't have it be dirt. It's everybody's shoes will be mud. Um, I have. It's the best we could come up with. Um, but it works. It's good enough. Uh, get it. We get it as weed free as you can. Um, what else can I tell you? So. If, if the flowers are ready, if the glads are ready, cut every glad with a flower shower. Um, people try to save them. You can't save any of this stuff. It has to go that day. Uh, if you have good sunflowers, chop them down. Uh, soak them in the cooler. You can always do anything after they're in the cooler. Um, we don't use any floral preservatives in the water just because we just haven't. Um, if we can get a clean vase or a clean bucket, that's 90% of the battle. Um, sometimes that's the whole battle. There's nothing worse than putting flowers in a dirty vase and just watching them just die in front of you. Uh, but you're too too busy. I was just too busy to wash your vase. Um, I don't like to cut by the bouquet. It takes too long. You walk too far. Um, Carrie likes to cut by the bouquet. I'd rather just cut a whole bunch of cities, a whole bunch of lizzies, a whole bunch of asters, a whole bunch of status and make some magic happen. Uh, it's really fun to just chuck them in a chuck them in the vases in the bar and in the shade. Um, oh, what else can I offer? Oh, this is some fun things. Um, nobody like. Oh, by the way, as far as zinnias, in addition to cactus, peppermint, nobody wanted it. Nobody. I don't know why. The zinnia is two different colors. It's apparently the apocalypse. Um, I had one lady, it was a fun one that uh, you think you do a nice job growing flowers and a lady has a party the third week of August. But her only requirement is no yellow salmon or pink glads or anything in a big giant centerpiece. Now the only problem with that is that I plant my glads the same every year and every year that week is only yellow salmon and pink glads every year for 20 years. It's great. Don't you have any other colors? I don't know. Do you see any other colors? Um, and with the deal with the cut flowers is, so we were trying to cut for efficiency and stuff. Uh, I had one woman that was working for me cutting and she was cutting and cutting, cutting. And, and she jumped in her car and started to drive away. I'm like, where are you going? She's oh, I want to go across the street and cut some rye. And it should look pretty in a bouquet. And I'm like, yeah, it would, but we have two acres of flowers right here that I spent a billion dollars on. Cut these before we start going somewhere else and finding other things to shove in bouquets. All the money is right here. Um, oh, what else have we learned? Uh, the one thing that I didn't know also about uh, flowers is. I'm still old school. I'm the check or cash kind of guy. I haven't squared it yet. Um, people are pretty cool with that yet, especially this year. They're really cool with it. Um, we're not, we'll maybe go to that someday, but I'm going kicking and screaming. Um, the one thing that is really fascinating is I give you a tomato box top and you go cut a bouquet of flowers or however many flowers you want. And then you come back and I say, well, how much did you, how many did you cut? And they look at me blankly and I'm like, well, you were there. Just count them. And that apparently is the is the worst thing you can ask somebody to cut flowers. Uh, again, who knew? We got to have party hats and we got to have people that help you count. Um, it's fascinating. Um, that's really all I got. Um, just try not to make flower burritos, soak your glads, and uh, uh, take any question you got. Wonderful. Well, you made it sound fun and not so easy, though. Uh, one of the questions that has come through is on this last slide where it says you're growing two acres of we cut, you cut. Please, anybody cut these flowers. That's in total, right? It's not individual plots of here's the you pick, here's the I pick. Got it. It's okay. Um, I'm just going to translate it. They're asking about the amount. It's two acres total. It's not like um, oh, no, it's, it's, over it's, here. It's, it's all together. It's two acres total. 
That's okay. two acres total. Um, the worst thing we did was we had a wedding and we wanted to kick, we needed a boatload of flowers. So we kicked everybody out of the whole field. Nobody else got flowers, but these wedding flowers. Well, the wedding was a big deal in town and who wants flowers that weekend? Everybody wanted flowers that weekend. So anyway, all two acres, it's all, it's all fair game. Uh, I might kick you out if I get jammed up. And do you, are they all one price per stem or do you so have- Everybody's price per stem, yeah. Unless you want it, unless you want a fancy centerpiece, unless you want something particular, you know, then I'll either do it by the hour or, or something like that. And even for the U pick, you don't distinguish between a zinnia and a- uh, The only Lizzie's I charge a little more for, there's some I charge more for, uh, but most everything's the same. And do you ever have problems with people wiping you out of one thing or another or trampling your plants? Um, yeah, you're going to take a loss. You're going to lose some. I watched two little boys just running crossways through rows and I really wanted to smack them down and I didn't. I really bit my tongue and then the family came out and they spent 50 bucks and they had the best time and they told their friends and then they came and bought pumpkins. So whatever, maybe a couple of zinnias got busted, you know, in the, in the scheme of things. Um, in the beginning, I would have lost my mind. Uh, you're going to, if you invite people in, you invite people to your house, don't be mad when they spill a drink on your couch. You know what I mean? You invite them there. So you got to have to deal with that. Um, I want you to come. I can't possibly do all this by myself. Uh, Carrie's a mad cutter, uh, but you have to come and do it. Just, it's way more fun. And uh, there was a question about, in the previous slides where you had the cooler and those cool little galvanized buckets. Will you share where you got those? Oh yeah, those are awesome. Don't use those. Those are the greatest decorative things that just leak water from the top shelf all over the bottom shelf. <laughs> Somebody bought them at a wedding supply store and they're really cute, but yeah, don't do that. We knew, going to, for our vases, we go to a couple of antique shops and buy a, uh, like a few or a few like a funeral home drop off point um the everything shops wherever you can get vases you know a million of them for a dollar uh last year foliar's coffee jars were one of the nicest and nicest widest mouth vase for a 13 stem bouquet it was kind of fun um what else would be used well, we do we have uh, about three questions about your uh gladiolus treatment uh, when do you do it? And can you share again the uh, ratio of Lysol? Uh, four teaspoons per gallon of water. Okay. Six hours before, and try to plant them that day. And you do I don't it know what happens after that. Plant, like, not, we'll, not when you dig them up, you do it in the spring. Right. See, because what was happening was I was getting glads that were already infected with thrips. I was just planting thrips. The thrips weren't in the ground. I was buying thrips from a reputable thrip company. <laughs> they came with the glads and with the Lysol, it whacks them and it kills them dead. That is good to know. And um, so do you just leave your bulbs in the ground over the winter or do you dig them up and reuse them or you just dig them up? No, I don't. I, I almost dug some this year just to see. Um, I don't have good winter storage for stuff. Uh, so I just leave them in the ground. And some years we have weird winters and I have glads the next year. I don't count on them. So I just plan on buying new ones every year. The 40 cents or whatever they cost a piece is, is worth it to me. Okay, any other questions? I'm watching the chat box and uh, would love uh, for Kenyon to share more of his insight with you folks. Talk about glads and not cutting them in. Two. Oh, yes, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So, so Betsy has showed me, I like glads because they're six feet tall. I believe all glads should be cut whole stem. Anything else is just weird to me, okay? That's just getting from the field to the stand. So one year it was late September and I needed glads and mine were done, but a lady had a wedding and really wanted glads. I called a friend of mine, she says, yeah, I got a bunch of yellow ones, I'll bring them right up. And she brought them up and she left them by the stand in a bucket. And I came out and I said, hey, Donna, where are these glads at? And she says, I put them in the bucket right by the stand. And I look out there and there's a bucket, but I can't see any glads. 
And I'm like, well, it can't be that bucket. And then I look in and the guys are all shorter than a five gallon bucket. And I'm Donna, the whole point of glads is that they're six feet tall. And she was like, well, I don't have that big a face. <laughs> oh, no. So one of the jokes is if you live in sharing, you better buy a tall face. Um, whatever. Uh, so Betsy showed me now that uh, it is acceptable to put cut glass in bouquets. I don't know, it just seems something weird. I'm not used to these newfangled things, I guess. Okay, and then uh, someone would like to know where do you buy your Lysianthus plugs? I get them from Grown So and from Raker and from Jolly Farm. Okay, and then any tips for a first year farmer? Tips for a first year farmer, do more plantings. Don't do one mega planting, do three medium sized plantings. Um, again, plant more sunflowers than you want. You can't go wrong with zinnias. Um, don't be afraid to feed them before you put them in. Um, weed them as best you can with whatever you can. If you're gonna do it bare ground organic, do something, mulch them with something. Um, I don't spray anything in them. I'm biting everybody in. It just seems like a big hassle and I don't know what's gonna burn what. Um, oh, use clean vases. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, try not to cut in the noonday sun. I say that a lot of flowers get cut at my house at three o'clock in the afternoon. Let's try to cut them in the morning. Uh, we cut them when we can. Um, what else? What other good first year advice? Carrie, got any first year advice? Um, and just have good relationships with whoever you're selling to. If uh, your florist says, hey, if you meet a florist that says, hey, can you grow this? Try it. Maybe you can, maybe you're not going to be, maybe you'd be a one hit wonder. Uh, but once you make these relationships, then if you're in a bind, they can help you. If they're getting a bind, they'll, you know what I mean? It works. It's just, it's just relationship building. And uh, do you ever change your prices from year to year? Yeah, we bumped them this year a little bit. I might bump them again. They were the same forever. Um, we bumped them this year. I think we sold some, we sell stuff too cheaply. Um, where I am, my wholesale base price is also my retail on the farm price. Uh, somehow they got worth more money by going for a ride in the car, I guess. Um, pricing, if we can keep cutting them, I don't want to overprice because I want to keep them moving. Um, I'm not holding out for big money on anything. And where my, my stand is not in a really super high money area. That would be the case here in Delaware County too. We're right, 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 right. It's, it's just... um, you know, local folks, but then we also get a lot of visitors from the city in the summer. So you could try to appeal to different demographics. Right, I want right. I want to sell to everybody. I want the lady that lives next door to be able to buy flowers in addition to the lady who has a nice place in Connecticut. Wonderful. And do you ever direct seed anything? Um, no, we we've, pl we've, we've gone through a lot of plug planting. Uh, a lot of the sunflowers we try to plant when they're maybe six inches tall out of 128 directly in the ground. Um, I don't have good enough weed control to direct seed. Uh, I've not really tried in our high tunnel to do any cut flowers. Uh, I have a friend that did hydrangeas and he cut them back and he had hydrangeas a month later than anybody else. Um, but there was still a demand. I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, there's the fun thing about flowers, you can do whatever you want. Once you find your crowd then you're golden. Um, I kind of stubborn and I like certain flowers and I'm gonna make that crowd come find me. Um, I don't advertise at all. We haven't advertised ever. I do a little bit of Facebook pictures, uh, but that doesn't really translate into sales. You get a lot of likes and you feel a lot of, you know, you feel good about yourself that, you know, 50 people like the picture of a flower, but it didn't really give you any money. Um, but people could drive in. Now, now it's kind of a, uh, I want to say it's a, the spot to be, but people know about us now and they, they know what we have. Uh, I skipped out because of COVID on one planting of gladiolus. 
And one lady was quite mad at me. I come this time every year and I want these gloves and you don't have them this week. And I just cheaped out because I was like, nobody's going to want cup flowers. It's the apocalypse. And I could not have been more wrong. Well, okay. Um, anything else that people would like to ask? Now's your chance. What do you charge for a bouquet? Uh, seven. And that's, that's for exactly. 15 stems or 13 stems, you said? 13 stems, yeah. Okay. Um, if you're going to come and cut, Oh, like some people are smart about cutting, but right? I've got to talk people to quarter Lysianthus. Don't cut the whole plant. You start bringing the whole plant back, then the $7 bouquet became a $15 or $20 bouquet. And they're like, why is bouquet so expensive? I'm like, well, you chopped the whole plant. You brought back a four foot tall zinnia plant. You're going to have to buy all the buds on that, you know? <laughs> Good um, strategy. And then what? what's your price for single lads? For single what? Single lads, uh, they've gone from a buck to a buck and a half. And you can get the bulbs pretty affordably, right? The corms, I mean, you can buy those wholesale uh, and they're not very expensive, correct? Right. Where do you get yours? Um, what's the name of that company? The Google Wholesale Bods. Nagels? Nagels. 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 Winner is Nagels. Um, yeah, so what time and they're, they're really good to work with. I get mixed colors. I have it of all the years growing clouds. I'm still afraid to get one single color of any one kind. Uh, so I just get 3,000 mixed. Uh, I used to do 1,000 pastels, but it's all the same mix. Uh, every, the first ones are always yellow, and the next ones are purple. And everybody hates purple and yellow clouds until the next color comes out. And then they would love a yellow or a purple to go with the color that is of the day. But that is just that. The fun part about flowers is this is all fleeting. So what you need and what you get are always two different things sometimes. And what time of year do you order your bulbs? Uh, I don't want to put them on my credit card until as late as I can. Uh, this year, who knows what's going to happen. So I'll probably do it next week or two. Have you encountered any trouble finding the seeds that you want for this year? Um, Johnny's apparently does was making no back orders now. So we got shut out of a bunch of cool stuff that apparently I just have to call back for to see if they have in a month or two. Um, so far, no. Uh, all the commercial stuff was still pretty much available uh, as far as plugs for sure. Um, so far, so good. And what other seed companies do you like? I love Harris. I love Seedway. I like Rupp. Um, Johnny's I buy some stuff from, um, Stokes. a little bit of flowers from Stokes, a lot, Harris. Uh, a lot from Harris, um, I don't think anything else. Jolly Farm a little. Yeah, a little bit from Jolly Farm. Do you usually buy a new seed every year or do you, uh, work from a big stock? With most zinnias and with know. most flower seeds, buy new ones, throw them away. You can plant them, you can do whatever you want, but don't count on them. Because unless you have perfect seed storing conditions, we have it and there's nothing worse than planting a flatter. A March space in a greenhouse is really valuable and it can't, you can't have a flat not come up. It costs too much, that real estate costs too much money. Uh, it's just worth it, just buy new seed. Seed's not that expensive. Um, even how bad my seed bill is every year. That, Start with good seeds. It's a, I've already spent way too much. <laughs> right. She spent way too much. Oh yeah, it happens. It's an addiction. You know what I mean? You're like, and what's you fun too? In, this, in January, it's really fun to be like, oh, you can set the world on fire in January. Uh, in July, you says, do you want me to do this? I'm like, I don't even want to walk across the driveway, cut your bouquet, you know? <laughs> we have big ideas now. Well, you've got a lot of thank yous in the comments. People really enjoyed the talk and the stories.